You're listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson, the podcast that tells you what it really takes to build a business and the simple steps to get you there. I'm determined to share with you the reality of easy, simple business marketing tips to make passive income so that you can start making money online. Making Money Online is sponsored by Nicola J. Rowley PR helping entrepreneurs and brands get visible through strategic storytelling. If you're serious about being seen and impacting the lives of others, harnessing the power of PR is the best way to grow and scale your business. Visit njrpr.com for more details and read Nicola's best-selling book, The Power of PR. Hello and welcome to another episode. I hope you're all having an amazing week, although it's only Monday but I hope you've had an amazing weekend. (laughs) I want to talk today about the confidence that can be eroded professionally when you have children or when any other big thing happens in your life. I have seen women who are brilliant at their jobs, best in their fields, either have a baby or get ill for a year or have something happen in their personal lives, go through a divorce. And it changes their confidence and they don't go back afterwards to where they were before. And I want to explore why that is. And I've got somebody here who is brilliant at what they do and has always been brilliant at what they do called Fiona Fraser. Fiona is somebody that I've known now for over a year and she is the podcast expert. There's nothing that she doesn't know about podcasts. And I'm not talking about just podcasts in business. Fiona has a track record of some of the biggest podcasts you've heard about out there. So welcome to the show, Fiona. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. I wanted to start with what you were doing a few years ago at work. Give us a little rundown of your CV because it's it's pretty impressive. I think the the bit most people care about is the 13 years in television. So it took me a while to get to that point. I was actually going to be a journalist, decided to work, uh, get a job at the BBC for the summer. This was all a bit later on in my career. And then basically never left the BBC for nine years. So <laughs> <laughs> I went in as um, a, a PA and then within two weeks I'd moved into uh, the PR department and just never, never left because it was just so exciting for me to sort of go into that environment. Um, it's a world that so many people want to be in, like working at the BBC, behind the yeah. scenes, seeing all that. I mean, you've met more celebrities than, than I've heard <laughs> of. Um, and, and we talk about that. And you've helped people on their, like some of their biggest, the PR for some of the biggest podcasts out there. Yeah. How did you go from being in PR to kind of specialising in the podcast side? So my career in TV was literally nine years at the BBC of PR and then I worked at like the biggest production companies in the country as well managing all the shows so for things like Celebrity Big Brother um, and then the last job I had managing shows like The Apprentice, Grand Designs, Take Me Out and then you know went off and, and had a baby and it was uh, I was due back to work March 2020 obviously we all know what that means. Um, COVID, March 2020 <laughs> equals COVID. <laughs> there we mentioned it. Literally was due back, was chomping at the beer. I'd done all my keeping touch days because I was just desperate to get back to work. And then they put me on furlough for seven months. And I was phoning up every week, begging them to fire me because I just wanted to go back to work. I couldn't be sat at home with my husband who was doing his teacher training, um, which was, you know, before anything was on the horizon, this was booked in. A, a, you know, a, to- a small child that I just loved to death, but needed to like have a piece of myself back by oh, going back to work. And then they, they yeah, they, so they kept me on furlough and then eventually told, asked me to um, basically go back and do an even bigger job, which in itself is not the issue. The issue was it was working on X Factor and Britain's Got Talent, which would have taken me up and down the country. My weekends and evenings would be gone dealing with the tabloid press, like that I've had, I've been doing for years anyway, but this would be taking it up to another level. And then you have a kind of have a choice to make uh, as a mum, don't you? I never wanted to be that mum that was. Oh, this is oh, I don't want to upset anybody by saying this, but having been in that corporate environment, you when you were a mum, you had a child and you were you were done. Yeah, so I've been. There. I had a real point to prove going into a job. I had basically signed my contract, found out I was pregnant that night for this new job, big new job. Went there pregnant and then had to wait for my scans to to tell them you know it's kind of the most nerve-wracking thing I've had to do saw the look of like I was I was already dead you know people's eyes had glazed over at that point I was told I was a talk of the town 
um, all of this, you know, because I had my badge on um, because no one announced it because it was just too awkward to talk about. Isn't um, that bad that it was awkward I, to talk about the fact that you were pregnant and that I was told to lean into it, <laughs> lean into it. <laughs> Like from the belly, like leaning to what exactly? It is so hard, and this isn't the first time I've heard this. Like, as soon as you say that you are you are pregnant, it's it's like you will never be able to do your job again. It was so embarrassing, honestly. And the things I had to do were like, it. You know, I went into that job, and within six weeks, had restructured the team. You know, done some big stuff, but it's almost like I had a point to prove the whole time. And you shouldn't around. have to have a point to prove, should you? No, and I remember someone saying to me, I won't identify them because I do love them, I think they're great, but they were like, you still could be good when, as good when you come back though, won't you? In front of HR, who were like, can't even say that. And they weren't even meaning it horribly, but there was this perception of like, oh, you're just, you're you're, you're done. Yeah, you're just a mum now. You can't be. Yeah. And I didn't even want to, you know, I didn't spend my life wanting to be a mum. This wasn't a moment I was waiting for. I just love working. I met a great guy. We got married got pregnant the day after my wedding. <laughs> it was a small window. Um, and there, you know, there you, there you have it. I'm like, she just turned four. So, but having that sort of furlough where I knew things, there was going to be a big thing coming and I didn't want to turn down a good, a big job because it was big. Yeah. I, I turned it down because, I mean, essentially they probably say, you know, wouldn't say I turned it down, but ins and outs of it. But I, I didn't want it. And I was clear about that. I went through the motions of what I had to do to get made redundant. But but in that time, I'd already started uh, retraining for other stuff because I'd kind of was done with PR. I was like, I'm not doing this anymore. TV is just like, you know, it's just spat me up, chew me out. I'm just a nothing now. Cause I've and been... that's probably how it made you feel because you were, yeah. you know, they loved you and you were at the top of your game and then you got pregnant and they didn't really care about you anymore. And that doesn't make you want to work really hard for somebody, does it? No. And the lot, the, hours of my life I've given to you know people at weekends and you know oh, the sort of things that you know I, can't, I literally can't even talk about because of they haven't run or there's NDAs or the legal issues like you know the, these people know who they are <laughs> and what I've done for them and that it's like oh well that's that then you're just you're just a nothing to nobody again and how did that that, that hurt yeah I was gonna say how did that affect your confidence I think the thing is, because I trained at the BBC, so obviously everything is editorially independent. You don't have an opinion. I've always kind of had, like, been, you know, as too big a personality. It's always had to be controlled back. There's always a line that's like, it's too far gone. You know, you've overstepped a mark here. Um, and I never quite knew what that was. So it kind of would just come and I'd be like, oh, my God, that was too far. <laughs> so or the opposite of that was just to do nothing and just kind of be really quiet, which is not my personality at all. So... It was, I was always going to work, doing a really good job, being very contained, professional, and then go out to the pub and, oh my God, the states I would end up in because the stress would come out, you know? Yeah. Well, we were all kind of like that. There was groups of us, you know, it was just that it was the done thing. And Especially look, if you're I, not allowed to show your personality, if you're basically always tamed a little bit, always told yeah. to, to be a bit quieter, be a bit less you, don't be too much, that's going to make you, it's going to come out somewhere. It has to. There's like a, you know, there, it's this energy inside that's like it has the steam has to come out the lid at some point. And it was in the pub, you know, with rose on Prosecco. And I don't get me wrong, I really had fun. Like on those nights out, they, you know, we I'm still friends with lots of people that work in in TV. So, but the distance is getting bigger even now. So it's kind of been a slow thing, and now it's even bigger. And that's I'm in a new place again with like with all of that because I don't quite fit anywhere now. In yeah, terms of I know what you I know what you're saying. When I met you, I didn't know this background. So I met you and I'm going to just be really honest. You were like a mouse. You were so quiet. Never been said about me ever. Yeah, you seemed nervous and mm -hmm. um you know, full of anxiety and like uh, you and and when you told me what you wanted to do, I was very excited by it and about what you could do and said, yeah, you need to go for this. But you seemed really unsure that you would be able to do what you wanted to do. Do you mm. think that comes from your confidence being knocked before? I think the rug was pulled from me definitely around the job, but also the minute I got pregnant, if I'm really honest. So it was, it was you know, there were the pregnancy was difficult. The birth was 
off the scale, something else. The recovery, you know, I'm still only just recovering now from quite a few health issues from it. And these things that you just don't really think or expect to happen to you. So, like, you know, being just charged from the hospital was your child's turning four. It's like, how am I still in the system from having given birth? Oh, <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah. So there was so many, and being a mum to me, like I'd never played with dolls. I'd never dreamt of a wedding, all these kind of things. I just wasn't prepared at all. Um, I, I'd had depression in the past. So was prepared for post depression. was like, to be honest, that's a stand. I'm going to get it. But what I got was actually a w- even worse because it was like I was worried I wouldn't love my child, but I, I actually loved her too much more than I could cope with. I get that. Yeah. It was terrifying. This like little thing that's like, <gasps> I couldn't, oh, even now I'm getting chills thinking about like just, you know, that time in my life where, and I just wanted to go back to work and be normal and like go to the office. And I remember they got these new coffee machines and they were giving out free snacks and, I was running up to the office being like, oh, my God, I'm back. Um, and people were like, who, who, who are you? Because <laughs> that was your normal, being at work, it's, doing a good job. Yeah, and just getting back to that a piece of yourself again. Yeah, so this the, the rug was pulled under you and you yeah. decided eventually not to go back to work. Yes, an arrangement was, was come to. Um, and I was officially made redundant. And, yeah, I did all right. <laughs> You did okay. So that gave you a bit of breathing space. Yeah, negotiations were had. So it it meant that I was kind of ready. But by that point, I'd already had my website. I designed it all myself. Straight away, I was POW PR, um, which stands for Pearls of Wisdom, P-O-W. I had an official email. It was all designed. Literally, the minute I signed that redundancy thing, um, I went live as like as freelance. But then even then, it wasn't freelance in the way of like the people that I know that freelance. They get a Gmail account and then they email around their friends and say, have you got any work? Where I was like, oh, I was already going bigger than that from day one. Yeah. Because you've um, been doing stuff bigger. So of course you're going to think bigger. Yeah. And did you feel you were going to be able to make a success of this business? I honestly remember saying to my husband, like if I can make 20 grand this like in the first year, I'll just be, I'll be happy. Like, look, you know, let's just survive it. And I actually, you know what I did? I went and did lots of agency. I worked with lots of incredible PR agencies because I'd never done that before because they were always seen as like these terrible people. Oh, my God. And actually, I had the best time because I learned so much. They're all incredible. The creativity of it all, the energy of it all. I just enjoyed it so much. And I made so many contacts. And actually, it was the first person that I ever worked for, that I only worked for that one time, that put me onto this podcast contact and it changed my life. Tell us a bit about what you do now. So Power PR is now just uh, podcast PR, so working for biggest production companies and, and talent in the country. You know, I'm going to be exhibiting at the podcast show the week this comes out, uh, which I'm so excited about because I went last year and was like, I just love the community of it. It's like TV, but people are nicer in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I really are enjoy. you allowed to tell us some of the podcasts that you've worked on? Yeah, definitely. I've worked on, so I work for Acast, who are like the biggest independent podcast platform in the world. So they hired me to help with their UK launches on shows. Like I launched The Rest is Politics, which is continuously the number one show in, in the country, and by far and away, like seeing the biggest change in listenership and behaviours. So I get really passionate about just how like exciting this is an area still, because that show in itself has done so much for the podcast industry. I can't, you know, it, it's amazing that I got to be part of it. And the team are really lovely as well, which I'm, again, I'm just like, God, how can you have it like so good on both sides that it's a great show. The people are nice. They really appreciate what you do. Um, and I also worked on, did some PR for like Fern Cotton's um, Happy Place. I've worked with Kew Gardens, uh, Wild Farm Wetlands Trust. And I've got some pretty big ones um coming up next couple of weeks and I'm working with talent now as well which I wasn't doing initially but I am now doing talent who are like their actual job is podcasting so um, it's amazing like I've seen you over the past six or seven months change from someone who doesn't look like they believe that they can make a lot of money in this to someone that knows that they can what do you think did that I, on it, like, I feel like you line this up because I'm going to say I'm going to say you, aren't I? Oh no, it wasn't me because <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I don't think it was. I don't think it was just me. I think it was because I. Or, well, it's partly you because I found 
So when I came to one so many this time last year, I was in, I was completely, I'd had, January was my best month ever before that, but I, the hours I'd worked was, I was like, this can't keep going on. I can't, you know, this can't continue. So obviously saw that this kind of passive, semi-passive income and was like, oh, this is so interesting to me because I'd done online courses and just, it, I remember the first time I signed up for it, it was just, I was like, this is so weird, but it was like a, the best thing that could have ever happened to me because I love learning and there's always something new and it was just so exciting. So the more I started following people, it was just like, oh God, this is a great community to be in because people are action takers. They've got a lot of energy and I, I just haven't really been surrounded by people like that. That's before, the thing. I think that's what changed it. Not me. Yeah. I think you surrounded yourself with people that gave you the belief that you didn't have until you could get it back. Yeah, and I think they're kind of, by coming through like one to many, like my idea then was pitch yourself to press. Whereas now, literally a year, literally a year later, it's pitch yourself to podcast because I didn't want to do PR. I didn't want to teach PR because it's so, I just don't, I can't have the belief of it. But now I can be like, no, but now we're seeing a change in podcasts. People understand it, it's more mainstream. I'm like, come on, go and get the benefits here because like PR is so hard to get. You're not even in front of the right people. Yes, it looks great on a website. And I'm not saying don't do it because, you know, I've got clients pay me to get it. So, <laughs> but I'm saying on on a, everybody's level, like podcasts can just bring you so much reward. So yeah. that's and you why found it really your niche. me that year. Yeah, yeah I, you I, found I, that niche and, and you knew you were good at it already. And it just makes complete sense to do that. And I've seen some of the people that have been working with you and their, their excitement about doing podcasts and having my own podcast has really shown me the different kind of audiences that you can bring in by having a podcast. So where do you now want to go from here? I mean, you're doing okay now financially. Like I've seen some <laughs> of your big wins and it's amazing. Um, so what's next for you? So after once me, I did level up and was like very much focused on the, with you doing that, building out my Power PR as an agency that runs itself because I could never let PR go, but I've now built this world that I can do it on my own terms with people I like and get results that really make me happy. So that I'm still working on kind of keeping going. But then eventually I want the freedom from that to go away. And to be honest, I've already got it in terms of going to explore this other stuff. So I am obviously the podcast expert, literally.co.uk and on Instagram. And I'm now helping people with their podcast in terms of developing them, but also making a podcast to me at a certain level is more like writing a book. So it take, can take three to six months. It's a lot of work. There's a reason people don't just generally start them. So I do that development bit with them to get them off just so they can just do it. But then also I want it to be accessible for everybody, which is why I'm doing the get books on podcast because every like I say, everybody can kind of benefit from it, from it. And once you start doing them, they're really fun and you're going to want to do more. So I love like, being on podcasts. Just, I love it. It's the best thing. Yeah. And it's so much easier than doing your own. <laughs> just go and guest on everybody else's. <laughs> It's just I need to do none of the work. But then when you become the podcaster, you have the control when you have access to people that you might not have even dreamt of or imagined you'd have access to. So I hear people who haven't even launched podcasts but have gone to very famous people and said, can you be on it? And they said, yes. No, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not surprised. <laughs> yeah, it is a bit like that. I did that with Amy Porterfield and was a bit shocked. Yeah, it, it's the way Whoever your dream is, honestly, podcasting will get you there. Yeah, I think you might be right. So what is, to, to kind of end this, what is a piece of advice that you would give to somebody that's had a massive kind of, their rug pulled under them and they're not sure how they will ever navigate back to being who they were before? What advice have you got for them? I honestly don't think I was ever the person I was supposed to be anyway. So it's taken me a year to get to this point where, you know, I can honestly, I've done so much work in terms of career, life, friends family I've you know I've shed stuff I've like had hard conversations because it, you know when everything's just like your grand zero again you build it back up and you can actually build it up to be like something you couldn't even imagined before so I'm now living a life that I just could never have imagined a year ago and it makes me it just makes me so happy and also you know kind of you're just continually learning and 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 adding to, to that happiness. So I think that my advice is just like, give yourself time and space to think about it as well. And like you say, surround yourself with the right people because I've, the people that I've been meeting over the past year have just been 
so in- incredible f- for me in terms of allowing me to be myself and like actually like let that out basically yeah I've loved having you in DI like it's <laughs> such a good group this year I absolutely love um how everyone is really supporting each other in there and it, it shows in the results that you'll get definitely I think that and as you know that kind of behavior aspect of like surround yourself by people that you know what is it they say like would say good things about you yeah and build you up whatever yeah yeah I feel like I've got so many amazing people that I can talk to about things because it's just like I would champion them they champion me yeah and then basically you're just creating these but this world for yourself that's like full of incredible people and yeah. how can you not be excited about that so I guess one of the biggest learnings is maybe if you've been through something don't rush to go back to what you were doing no. before maybe there's a different reality out there that is better for you that actually that's you're the last thing, thing yeah yeah 100 percent. sorry to interrupt but that's the last thing to do is like your automatic thing is going to be do the thing before like me phoning up saying take me back or make me redundant i had and i remember i had an interview at netflix as my you know while all this was going on which was the obviously like the the thing with the pinnacle everyone was working towards they paid you loads of money you got all the days off you wanted you got to travel and i was sitting there i was about to see the corner i thought job like i I don't want to work for Netflix and people would would think I was absolutely crazy for saying that. And even in the mad state I was in, but don't listen to those feelings because that, you know, the more you do, the easier it becomes and the quicker you can just be like, that's not for me. And then you're clearing the path. And that's about, that's what it's about. Clearing the path of what's supposed to be for you. Amazing. Thank you so much Fiona for coming on. It's been such a great chat with you. If people want to find out more about podcasting, where is the best place for them to come and get help from you? I think definitely on Instagram. I'm just at the podcast expert um, and I put all of my stuff there. So perfect. Um, We'll put that in the show notes so you can go and have a look, but thank you for being here and Everybody listening, thank you for listening again. Love doing this podcast for you. I've been receiving so many messages from you lately um, about you binge watching, binge listening at the podcast on your walks and things like that. And I love hearing from you. So do get in touch if you're listening to the podcast. Tell me where you listen. Um, tell me which is your favorite episode and leave us a review as well. And I will see you next week for another episode of Making Money Online. Thank you for listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson. If you'd like to get hold of my guide to launching, go to lisajohnson.com forward slash launch and let's get you making money online.